Ah, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big, big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad walk on. Man, I got this guy here today, man. He don't need no introduction. This old boy. Oh, I want my introduction. Now, nah, he don't need an introduction. <laughs> no, I need my introduction. We in LA, y'all. Y'all hear him. Y'all hear him in the background. You know, he think he on stage. <laughs> Comedian Ron G is in the building. What's up, my man? How, How you, you doing, doing man? Man, I'm so good, bro. Thank you for having me. Man, you one of them guys, man. So, co- comedy is something that we've kind of, we've been kind of rocking with a lot of comedians, yes. man. Yes. And And I seen you, and like I said, I seen you down in Houston. And I never would have thought. Houston was a good time, man. I never would have thought I'd have been over here uh, interviewing you, and I didn't know you knew Kenyatta at the time. Yeah, that's my dude, man. That's crazy. How long crazy. have you known him? Man, uh, probably like, I think I've seen him around, but him and I, our friendship got closer d- during uh, quarantine. Hmm. We really? We meet each other in the, in the uh, Rounds parking lot just talking, chop it up. Really? Yeah, I, man. I, I, I know when I was coming up here, because we had came, we came and did the show here uh, six months ago, mm-hmm. and then we did it before that. This is our third time this here. This is the third show we did Interview. in only, Hold on, only the third time? Interview, yeah. no, interviewing. interviewing. We've been to LA many times before. Yeah, okay, because right. of the clothing show, we came here and shop and stuff like that. Yeah. But for from the podcast, we've only been doing this podcast a year and a half now. I didn't even know that because he sent me a clip and he's like, "I got this new podcast." And I was like, "Cool." And he's like, "Check it out." And I saw you with a strong hairline. I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> good people." Yeah. <laughs> and you was in that video smiling. I'm cool. Okay. <laughs> And whatever he do, he ain't got to explain. I'm like, I'm rocking with you, bro. Whatever it is. Yeah. Because he's he the same way with me. He support everything I do. He oh, wow. definitely support everything you do. Because he told me, he's like, yeah, man, Ron G, my comedian Ron G, he a comedian, man. Yeah, you can come do it. I'm like, really? I said, that's the same dude that uh, basically, uh, was he down in Houston? Is he with Control? Yeah, he know that guy. I said, man, that's crazy, man. Because I just interviewed Mike Bliss. Mm-hmm. I just interviewed uh, uh, Jordan, Jordan Jackson. Jordan Jackson. Yeah. Jackson. Yeah. Like, they was all performing together. They're my so, folks, man. They hustlers, man. Mike mm-hmm. is a hustler, bro. How did you end up on even linking with Country Wayne? Uh, it's kind of funny. I got a phone call from my uh, homegirl, Jenny Kim. Shout out to Jenny Kim. Uh, she's an agent and she was like, hey, I just got the phone with Country Wayne. I feel like y'all be a good fit. And I was like, I've seen him. I've seen his videos and I heard of him, but like, uh, she was like, yeah, he doing some tour dates. You want to do it? And so I did a couple dates and like, energy was dope. Like his his fan base is like amazing. The people mm-hmm. that rock with Country mm-hmm. Wayne, man, it's like, it's like all my favorite aunties. Like just, <laughs> Just good people, man. Yeah. And uh, him and I hit it off, man. And I just respect his hustle. And I love the way he talk. He got big talk. Mm-hmm. He got that big talk. I like that. Because yeah. everybody don't dream that big. But he's a real big dreamer. And I like it. And I was like, ooh, I like this. So it uh, worked out. We did a couple days together, man. It was fun. Wow. So just watching his videos and a couple of people, us regular folks, you yeah. know, watch these videos and get a perception of the person that they're watching. Yeah. Does he line up with everything that you thought he would be? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because uh, Wayne is special. Oh, I don't more. think most people know that. Because, uh, you know, as a comedian, we're purists. We always like, yeah, they be doing videos, but are oh, they funny? You know what I'm saying? That's how comedians are with people who be doing social media. You're like, yeah, they, 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 they cool online, but can they, can they stand flat foot exactly. and do this craft for an hour, man? And watching Wayne perform, man, Wayne is special. Because he surprised me because He's I always hilarious. thought, I always, because that was our first time ever watching him on yeah. stage when we came to Houston. Yeah. And we watch him on um, on Instagram or YouTube all and the Facebook, time. Facebook, yeah, yeah. Right, but then to see him in person, I just didn't know he was going to be that funny. Man, Wayne is the exception. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, he's the exception, yeah. So, so how, let's get, uh, Wayne got his shine off Boss Talk 101 today. But today we want to talk to comedian Run G. Let's we talk here. about, let's talk about you, uh, how you got into comedy? How, how? What part of LA are you even from? I'm from South Carolina. Oh, you ain't even from out here. I'm from the South. I right. heard your you accent. You from I'm South like, Carolina? Born and raised Columbia, so South Carolina, know, man. Uh, my boy, we interviewing this uh, in a couple of days. Dunk, Dunk Master. Dunk Master. Dunk Master. You don't know him. Probably don't. I love him. He's in the cars. He, he, he in the cars. He, oh. Yeah, and he gonna be in, in Vegas. Actually, That's he with a cool too. He with a cool. Like he, he, they, they rock with him. So I thought you might know him. Like 80, Eighty-five South people. He, no. They rock with him yeah. too Carlos yeah, yeah. Miller be with him yeah. We all rock We all kind of In the same little And the circle. more successful you are The smaller the, the country get mm-hmm. Correct you know Correct So that But so South Carolina Isn't that Yeah uh, And when I finished school strong, right? Yeah. The day I finished school I moved to Atlanta And I kind of figured my life out And once I figured it out I moved here And then it took so the off. day you finished high school, you moved here. Sorry, after I finished college. When okay, I finished college, I, I moved say. to Atlanta. Okay. Well, so what Atlanta, was yeah. Uh, I lived in Marietta, and I okay, had a house in Roswell. Marietta. But then, like, I said, once I figured out why I'm on this planet, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. 
So were you always growing up? Were you always a hilarious kid who just loved to cut up? I think I had it, but I didn't know. Like I'm from the south, like dreams weren't real. Like where I'm from, you do the formula: you go to school, you get a job, you get married, you make babies, you retire, you die. That's what I was taught. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Your parents work at the plant their entire life, and I went to school, man, and I, I had a job in Atlanta, and I got fired. Like I, I got fired from the first job I ever had, and that was the moment like where you do everything right, and then something go wrong, you like what's next? And so my cousin was a comic in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, shout out to Trey Black. Um, he got on. He uh, used to host at a place called Uptown Comedy Club. Sunday night was Apollo night. Room full of dope dealers and strippers. <laughs> and he was like, hey, man, you should try going up. And I was like, all right. Tried it, had one joke. Uh, they booed me. After the boo, they told me to kill myself. <laughs> and uh, I fell in love. They're hard on comedians. Oh, yeah. Atlanta, Atlanta ain't no punk. Yeah. You, with, wow. you went, used to go to that, what's that, Atlanta Comedy? Comedy, um, yeah. comedy Theater? Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, like, headline what, was the, what was the first um, comedy club you went to? What was The that first called? one ever was Uptown. Uptown. Uptown was the first time ever, man. But, like, I, it, I just fell in love. Like, I don't know if you play sports. If you ever get dunked on or ran over in football, you got a decision to make. <laughs> you right. gonna keep playing and figure it out, or you gonna join the band? That's right. So you and I, I treat comedy like that. Once I figured out, okay, like I know I'm funny. I just got to figure out how to do it on stage. And I used to watch people. Like shout out to rest in peace to Tyler Craig. Tyler Craig was the OG. I'm watching him and a lot of other older cats, man. And I'm like, oh, I can do this. You just gotta have confidence. And I figured it out. Yeah. So you're the type of person right. that when you hear a no. It does motivate you to keep going harder, don't it? Especially when God told you something. Hey. When God tell you something and you hear it now, you're like, okay, no for you. But your, your experience ain't my experience, and I'm going to figure it out. Wow. It's something you say. Uh, I remember talking to Jordan Jackson, and he was telling us how, how Country Wayne influenced uh, him for his, the God side of things. Of course. Be, being that he would, I guess, pray before the shows and all yeah. that stuff. Like, that's, that's interesting to me. Like, a lot of people... Have, don't don't do those things. Not open about them, like Jesus is popping and stuff like that. Yeah. How, how much influence did that have on you, even working with him? Did you even know he would? I knew he was, but I didn't know to what level. Because sometimes you see people okay. in their space, and you like, oh, you ain't who you say you are. But for mm-hmm. him, he was legit. Okay. Like he was super dope. And so for me, I look at it like, in this career. Most people chase the dream, but they don't work on the stuff to help you sustain once you get to it. Mm-hmm. I got it. That's like connecting with God because God is like God give you joy when you do something for a living like he'll give you the talent but if he don't give you the joy attached to it like that's why you like how you make all this money and doing drugs or how they do all this and they own drugs like why are they doing that I'm like because you don't have the joy attached to it but when you chase God as much as you chase your talent that's when God give you the peace that comes along with it and you can enjoy it wow how, what about those like I know what's that boy name uh, uh, Chance that be recording them I think um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. What, um, what um, have you ever thought about getting into the skits and doing the things? I like do skits. That? I got my own lane. Just another thing about social media, which I think Wayne kind of perfected, is is finding your lane in that. Yes. Like it's like I love comedy. If you see me perform, like I'm good. At, I'm great at what I do. Of course. I refine and, and define my voice so long where you like, okay, that's that's a Ron G joke. Social media the same way. And people think you can just go on social media and just be funny. You got to find your lane because people that do well on social media, they find their voice. But and how it's, long it's did it take just, you to find it out? I found it during quarantine. I had like 10,000 followers during quarantine and then now I'm like almost at 70. Mm. But hey. I found my thing because I, like, I saw a bunch of people do side-by-side videos. I don't like doing what everybody else do, so I broke the third wall and I had a green screen. So I do green screen on all my videos and I'll be in the video with somebody. So if somebody fighting, I'll jump in and like fight them too in the video. <laughs> <laughs> it looks crazy, but I'll make it look real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was my niche. Wow. wow. And it took off during quarantine. How Man. hard is that to edit though? Uh, so on Instagram They got something called Reels And you, it's a green screen Option inside It the, is I never yeah. used it though But I see oh, it Oh it changed my life I green screen every day And went through it. Everything That's crazy wow. Somebody fall off something I'm trying to catch them And miss them And they fall on the ground Like But I'll make it look real I mean yeah. that's my own version of Again finding my voice online But it took a while Because part of it Is doing something in our head, we like, oh, I'm, a, you know, social media. I want to do it, but it got to be perfect. It ain't got to be perfect. Sometimes when it's messy, the more comments you get. Who, who, what surprised you in comedy? Like, what person inspired you? Kind of like came to you and, and maybe even watched you perform and gave you some things that made you feel like, dang, that's, you know what I mean? That, mm-hmm. that I needed to hear that. It's kind of funny because it was never a direct conversation, but watching people's careers, man, you okay. like, oh, it just take time. You just gotta stay with it, like earthquake. Okay, yeah. Earthquake's been funny forever. 
But to see him get a Netflix special now, he stayed in it long enough to watch it all come to life. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. watching cats like the hard that. Hard work paid it off. Yeah, like a Dion Cole. Dion Cole yeah. been doing this for a long time. Been funny for a long time. But watching him get his special and his special be special, you like, whoa. Like, you just got to stay with it. As my buddy Byron Bowers, man, he's another comic I started out with, Atlanta. Uh, he said, you know, L.A. is the bread line. You stay in the line long enough, you're going to get your bread. That's yeah. true. How hard is it for you? Come when I think about people or human beings in a whole, we go through situations on a daily basis. We have our ups and downs. You know, you at home fighting with your wife, you know, having a bad day, whatever. But you got to go on stage and yep. be funny for everybody else when you, you don't even feel in the mood to be. Right. How do you do that? So I feel like God kind of, uh, I got groomed in the fire. Meaning, like, I've dated girls who be like, I'm on my way to work. They be like, we need to talk. I'm like, I'm about to go to work. And they're like, we need to talk. I'm like, you going to wait till I'm in route to work? Like, you couldn't wait till I get off to talk about this? So I've dealt with so many of those girls. When I met my wife, my wife actually gave me peace. Because I thought as a comedian, if I have drama, I always got something to talk about. Right. But also, the other side of that, you got peace, you got more emotional space to write and actually have a good time. So I don't, I, I go to work stress-free. My wife, she, she dope. Wow. That's awesome. We don't have them problems. <laughs> <laughs> We don't. So how do you like like when you go into a crowd and, and when you go out and you dealing with these people, man, looking at these faces, uh, dealing with different. How do you, how did you master it? Like, cause me, if I got up there and looked at all those people, man, I'd be like, what the hell, you know? Yeah. Which I've done it, of course. You know, I've had yeah. to speak here recently mm -hmm. all the yeah. time because of this mess. Looking at facial expression. Yeah. Some like, people I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I look at anything. I just try to. How do you? How did you get Psych used to that? Out. Honestly, man, it's mileage. Just like when I came in here, I said, bro, you make it look way too easy. You've been doing it so long. You're already yeah. charming off stage, but to turn that mic on, you in your element. But yeah. The more yeah. you do it, that's why comedy. People that's good at what they do, they make it look easy. People are like, oh, yeah. I can do that. I yeah. can do a radio show. No, yeah. you can't. It, it, I, I, uh, the stuff y'all do, I'm watching y'all in between. Like, they think, you can't do this. It's crazy, right? I make comedy look easy because I'm great yeah. at what I do. When you saw me in Houston, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a great host, bro. Oh, you go in. I want everybody to feel good. I want to make the room small. I want you to feel like you've known me your entire life when I perform. That's what I do. You man, man, love what you do. And you yeah. love what you do. Mike came out there and he just hanging out for a second. Man, Mike's so <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Mike's so hilarious. Mike come out there talking and as soon as they read them laughs, he won't. Hey y'all, coming to the stage. <laughs> he start rubbing his beard. Hey y'all, coming to the stage. Uh, Ron G, he's your host, y'all. All right now, take care. Watch the skits. Exactly I can tell what is about to happen too. I said, Mike, why don't you go out and do these three jokes right here? He'd be like, all right, man, I'm going to go out there. Then he started talking and flexing in his shirt, and all the women like, woo! And, and then he started talking. That's, it. that's all he get. Hey, coming to the stage, y'all. Hey. Uh, you love him. You're going to love him. And he messed my intro up every time. I'm like, bro, I don't know what you're doing right now. Let me ask you something, man, because we had Faze on Love on the show, and that's that's how we, Mike ended up getting almost a million views because Faze on Love said something about Country Wayne's uh, comedy. Mm -hmm. Said that this is this happened on Boss Talk. This is what this whole thing spiraled off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Faison comes on my show. He says that that's some other shit. Them skits, like that's the old, you know the new way of doing comedy. But when he was challenging the fact, he was saying he had residuals and all that. Well, Mike hit us up and was like, "Well, I want to come on and speak on that." <laughs> and and basically, Faison has no clue. This yin and yang thing happened because Faison from a different world. He's the older generation. A different generation. He don't yeah. know. And Columbus Short even. Who, who, yeah, is Columbus, Columbus coming today? Yeah, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, it, it, these worlds that they are in are different from the world the country they don't get it bro so it's like how do you bridge this gap because both of them are dope and if they ever got it oh they'll kill it too because it's right there for them as well if they could understand Cause they have it because right. it's not as easy like you just said like what we do oh it's hard it's not easy and so I'm the generation in the middle I'm the generation where uh, if you did a late night performance your life would change Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a descendant of, like, if you do, like, a, uh, what is it, Johnny Carson yeah, or, like, yeah. a Letterman, your uh, life uh, would you change. You can't just say that without I'm, saying Arsenio Hall. Arsenio, too. Yeah, I'm, I did Arsenio. <laughs> I, I did. I did Arsenio. When he came back, yeah. I did Arsenio Hall That's show. Dope. But I'm on that generation. But also, something happened while my career was taking off. I did, uh, I was a finalist on Last Comic Standing. Right, I, I did a that. show called Bill Bellamy's Who's mm -hmm. Got Jokes. Oh, yeah, I Tiffany that. Haddish was on there, Lil Rail. Mm -hmm. Like, all, my, my class is becoming superstars. But social media happened after, during that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it changed the it changed Dynamics. the playing field mm -hmm. where you have cats who've been doing comedy for ten plus years and you got people who with social media followers going in for the same auditions. Wow. And for me, you know, I was one of the complainers like, oh yeah, they doing videos but they can't do what we do, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But then after a while I was like, I can get it, either do that or get in the game. 
Mm. So I pivoted and I'm like, I do social media. I'm great at social media and I'm great at stand up. So, so I don't want to be left out. behind. You figured it it's out. It's like Blockbuster Video. Yeah. yeah Everybody was going remember right. having the Blockbuster night, but Netflix came to Blockbuster and they was like, nah, we're not doing that. And then mm-hmm. they, they didn't pivot. It's like cab drivers. Cab drivers was doing what they doing, but then Uber came and now they like, nah, we not, you know what I'm saying? You I get don't know where game. I went the other day and I actually saw a cab and it blew my mind. I'm like, taxi's still running right oh, now? Yeah, they in run. LA, it's not a thing, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, that's what our world is. You got to keep up. If you don't, like doing a podcast, you, I'm sure you're dope at what you do outside this podcast. Oh. But this gives you another platform. It increases your merchandise. It increases your visibility. Now you're getting speaking engagements. But if you don't pivot when the moment happens, you're going to miss out. It's kind of like, that's what 2020 was. 2019, God was like, do you have fun? Because it's about to run out. 2020 came. It was a great reset. God gave us the receipts for all our choices. If you wanted somebody just because they're cute, now you're at home and you can't go to work, you got to be like, they're cute, but I don't like them at all. But I got to see them every <laughs> single day. I can't go nowhere. Then you got the person like, yeah, he cute, but he own a restaurant. Your restaurant shut down. Then what you got to deal with? You know what I'm saying? Like wow. you seeing your receipts from everything you chose. And then during that time, God gave us all the vision. 2020, God gave everybody a vision. He said, do this new thing. People start investing, starting their own business. You know there's no such thing as job security anymore. Mm-hmm. So now you got you to gotta pivot toward what God put into your heart. And 2021 was like, all right, now this is what you need to do. And if you don't, you're going to get left behind. Left 2022, behind. we watched a lot of people that didn't make it. Wow. Financially, emotionally, a lot of relationships didn't make it. Because no, they it, didn't pivot. Spiritually. Spiritually. You're right, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, they didn't pivot. For me... I, if you see me perform, I do a lot of relationship stuff. That's my jam. But when I got married, uh, six months into my marriage, everything shut down. So me and my wife sitting around the house. I'm like, okay, we did five years of marriage in two summers. You know what I'm saying? And I was yeah. like, you know what? Let's start doing this live, this IG live. So we did a couples game show on Instagram live to meet other new cool couples. Then after that, we had extra time. We was done around 830. How did that go? It was amazing because we talked about our junk in front of everybody. Like mm-hmm. I, I live a career where I talk about my ugly in front of everybody. Most people are like I ain't talking about that. Like, right. That's How my life. How does she feel about that? We she kept me honest. You know what I'm saying? Because we would talk about like like I battle depression. Being an entertainer, we got highs and lows, and you know the amount of no's I deal with being an actor, a comedian, and a black man. Nobody can fathom that. You have no clue. And I would battle depression. My wife African. They don't have no reference point for that. They just work through everything. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I didn't know how to comfort you while you were battling yourself but I you know, started doing research and I leaned into it and we talked about it in a public setting and everybody was like yo I love what y'all doing I ain't never seen somebody do that before because most entertainers they're going to give you the highlights oh I'm doing this I'm like no I ain't always good I how did she comfort you because I, you have a lot of people out here who I've met some of these people who go through depression and their spouse cannot comfort them they're like you know I just want to be left alone but to right. me someone who or I'll deal with it on my own Right. but then a person who's going through depression all it's going to do is make you go deeper and deeper in depression. Right. You know, but that's so. the trick of depression. Depression makes you want to isolate. Right. For me, my love language is touch, and I know my triggers. My triggers is whenever I feel stuck, whenever my head and my heart are in two different places, that's when I usually get depressed. Depressed. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I have a vision, like in my career, I've had moments where in my head, I saw my career taking off, but in my heart... Or in my heart, I saw saw it happening. But in my head, nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. Like, God, have you forgotten about me? And I would get depressed. But I know that my wife in my space, my love language is touch. When she leans in, it makes me feel love. And I'm reminded, like, none of this stuff matters anyway. Because when you go on the ground, you can't take your dream with you. That's right. Your legacy will live. But, like, all the stuff you stressed about, once you're not in this body anymore, none of it matters. Wow. So you, You talk from a place that you've been through a lot. You know, oh, absolutely. You can tell, because, but yeah, because of the way that you speak, it pretty much. But but to have God as a foundation of it also comes out in what you say, because I'm I'm just checking out the moves. You know, everything goes this way, that way, but it always come back to God. You know what I'm saying? You gonna throw that in there? You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So and I, I think that's dope, man. And to have a backbone, you know, have somebody with you that that supports you. That's a whole nother level. You know what I mean? People don't realize how important that woman over there is to me. You know what I'm saying? Been with me for 20 years, had my back. If I do a podcast, she do a podcast. I do a store, she do a store. If I'm working on something, she try to figure it out with me. And that's, you don't find that every day. Marriage is a cheat sheet to life. But real nobody time. can tell you that. That's real. I Most like people it. tell you do it all by yourself. iPhone, I do this, I, you know, iPad, like everything is like I, I, I. Having somebody to go through this life with is the best feeling ever. Wow. 
I mean, I agree 100%. The right person to go. Oh, the right right. person. But again, that's up to you, though. If you focus on your career and you ain't checking in with God and you meet somebody and you only going off looks, you ain't tapped in. No, you ain't tapped in at all. Because God will tell you. He'll tell you. If he he gives you peace, God always shows up and gives you peace. I mentioned earlier with career. If If you're doing your craft, and you love it and you have peace, that's God. If you're with somebody and you can let your let your hair down and, and like just be yourself, people that love you allow you to be present. When you were a the kid, they don't care about your day. At all. They don't care about the stuff you stress about. At all. Then you gotta be present. You know At what I'm saying? All. That's you're what right. do, dope love is makes you be present. Man, so um, what, what's 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 next for you? What, do you want to get into movies? Or Man, you... I got I'm a bro. You don't you you ain't did your research. I got he six is, movies coming yeah, out. Yeah, he does. I got six movies coming out. Six, uh, six. I got six. I booked six movies this year. I, I got a movie coming out. Research. See, I'm, I'm going it's off. Okay. Of, I'm going off of Kenyatta. What what it's do you okay. think? No, I did. I looked it up. Oh, well, I got well, right what's here. Six I movies. Got, hey, hold on, I'll tell oh, you right now. That's why she got my bag. Hold on, there he is right here. I already had it all pulled up. Well, while she's looking, I got a movie coming out with Tom Brady. He has a movie coming out called 80 for Brady. Brady. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he has a production company and he's in the film. That's crazy. Uh, I got another movie out with That's Machine. That's his first movie, right? I think so. He yeah. got another uh, another one out with the Machine Gun but Kelly. you can't just ride past that. How oh. did you get a movie with Tom Brady? Bro? I auditioned. I've been doing this for a while, so they, you, how you find out about it? You know? So I auditioned and they gave me a role but they was like, we like you. Let's give you another role and they gave me a bigger role so I'm on number four on the call sheet with Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, and Rita Moreno. These are like OG Right. Acting legends, and I'm number four in the call sheet. How does that make you feel? It's happening. That's why I said it's the bread <laughs> That's line. That's crazy. You stay in line long enough, it'll happen. Uh, I got another movie coming out with Machine Gun Kelly, which is a, a film on uh, like mental illness. It's super dope. It's an RT film. I'm in that as well. And I got my own. Uh, it's an independent film called Terry that I did. It's about mental illness and about faith and being mad at God. And it's a super dope film where my heart breaks on camera. Like, literally, you can't cheat this moment. You see Best Man Holiday mm-hmm. where Morris Chestnut was crying because mm-hmm. it's, it's that moment. I get it, and I'm the lead. Like, I get to have that moment. Also, I got how hard an- is Hold on. How hard is it for you to tap in? Because that one should be easy because you went through depression and all of that. So you tapped into, you know, what you went through before. How but hard, how is, hard is it to tap into, like, get a certain role that, especially something that you've never been through in your life. Yeah. And then you have to tap into that character yeah. and portray that on film to make everybody who's watching believe what you're actually going through. So it was actually tough. It was tough in the fact that you, as humans, we don't realize we stop ourselves from feeling. We all been through some trauma in our lives, especially being a person of color, that we don't allow ourselves to feel what we're supposed to feel. So we work through it, we keep smiling, we be sarcastic, we do whatever we do, but we never let ourselves feel. During that uh, film, we was doing rehearsal, and um, the director, she was like, do this, do this, and I was reading my lines, and I let myself feel what I was supposed to feel, and I got depressed when I did it. So I was driving home, I didn't know it. My wife was like, you okay? I said, yeah, I'm good. She's like, no, you're not. You okay? And I, I went to the place I was supposed to go in the movie. I did it in rehearsal, and I didn't know how to get out of it. I didn't know how to turn it off. To I didn't know how to turn it off. But then, day of, I had to find a happier way of getting to what I need. Example, um, some people who don't know how to act, they will go to, let me imagine my mom dying. I don't mm-hmm. want to do that. But if I imagine the person that I love the most seeing me perform, it'll take me somewhere. And I'm like, oh, man, my granny, like she didn't get a chance to see me perform. She didn't see me graduate, but watching my, visualizing my granny in the audience, watching me perform would make Brings me cry. emotional. It's a happier way of getting to what I need right. versus like, but. I like that. I like yeah. that rather than thinking about something sad like I can't do dying. that. Like that's, Who that's isn't what, even that? Yeah. And so um, during that film, I had to have, I had to cry two days back to back. So I went through like five different buckets of things I went through in my childhood and I had the chance to purge and get all that do stuff out of my chest. you have a therapist? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I was about to say, for all of that, you going to need Oh, one. I did. I did. But I also went to happy places, places that bring me joy through, you know, it was tears through joy. Mm-hmm. And when I was done, I felt empty. That's why I'm like, I'm really proud of this project. We're going to get get back into um, all the other um, jobs that you have you yeah. know, coming out. But what I do want to ask about, because like recently, I know Will Smith came yeah. out and said, you know, he apologized to Chris yeah. Rock. Okay. For me, watching him, he looks so sincere. Yeah. But when you watch actors, yeah, and you're thinking, well, they're an actor. Yeah. They can they can portray whatever like they, he can come on there and pretend like yeah. he's sincere and make everybody believe that he's sincere. Right. How can you? How can you get out of that? Like people how find it hard. How can you get out of that? <laughs> As a person receiving yeah, whatever they give. Yeah, giving? because then it's hard to believe an actor to me because you're so good at what you do. 
even in a relationship. Yeah. And I tell you, your wife, but yeah, you yeah. know, you could be in a relationship with some somebody, and then you're in an argument, and you say, "Well, this is the truth. This is the truth." Da-da-da. Right, right. They're like, I don't believe you because you right. can lie, you can this, you can that. How do you get out of that? Well, it goes back to it's God hard again. For you. It goes back to God again. When you're tapped in, you know good energy and bad energy. Okay. You've been with a guy, and you know he's a player and a dog and a whore. You know that. You know it when you feel it. But then also when you meet somebody nice, it almost makes you feel uncomfortable. Like you up to something. But that's our natural human, um, I guess, Defense inclination to want to feel like that. But you know what good energy feels like. When you show up in his space, you feel good. You ain't got to be nothing. You ain't got to be tough. You ain't got to be strong. All that mm-hmm. stuff that we did to cope in our childhood, you ain't got to do none of that when you're in the, per- the presence of somebody you love. That's why I said good love gives you peace and it makes you feel present. Wow. That's yeah, dope. we from the yeah. south too, man. You know, yeah. bro. You yeah, know, you know, hustling. You know, pimp when you see one. Hardcore. I <laughs> you just know pimp when you see one. Pimp and Ken. No, <laughs> All right. I got some in my family. I can tell. But I'm like, when I'm around goodness, I can tell. So, but yeah. if you ain't tapped in, you'll never know. Yeah. You top, treat everybody the same. Top three artists. I mean, artists. No, top three comedians. Comedians of all time. All time. All time. All time. Dead Number or alive. One. Dead or alive. Uh, we got to do Richard Pryor. That's the default. That's, that's it. Everybody Richard says Pryor. that. You got to do default. I'm gonna go. Man, I feel like Chappelle is a default too. You gotta say Chappelle. Okay, that's but I'm gonna go too. say I'm gonna say Jamie Fox. Man, I got I got more than five. No, no I only two. Need three. I ah. mean three. Sorry, three. All right. So get them three. And the third, I'm gonna have to say. Oh, you said that too. Okay. Man, because it's either Kevin Hart or Sinbad. You remind me of Kevin Hart when you start talking about the I movies. I talk real fast. And, yeah, but it's, I'm gonna say either Kevin Hart or Sinbad. One or the other. You pick. Man. I'm going to say more influential. Jeez, because Kevin Hart gave me my last two gigs. All right, cool. Yeah, um, I'm telling you, you remind so me of So he gave you last like, two gigs? Yeah. So I How feel did like that happen? He took the top off for comedy where there's no ceiling anymore. That's right. That's why I said his impact on comedy right. will be felt forever. That's his legacy, wow. his impact. And you can do whatever's in your head. He got like a, a vegan restaurant, fast food restaurant opening up. I'm like, nobody's ever done that with comedy. I think that's so dope. Um it's out of him or Sinbad. I don't know. Because Sinbad was like the first clean comedian I ever saw. Where I saw my family watch an HBO special together. Like that in my head as a kid. I was like, yo, this is crazy. I, who is this guy? And how he changed comedy for me was special. So I'm going ah, to just say Sinbad. Really? Sinbad, the OG. I'm, I'm going to give his, his flowers. Give him his flowers. And I say Jamie Foxx. When I first saw I Need Security, it changed my life. i never seen a comedian stay in character that long. To where yeah, people weren't laughing no more, but he was still in character. And for mm-hmm. me, I'm like, I like this guy. Yeah, he's yeah. the guy to get chicks. He remind me of myself, wow. and he's funny. Wow, you know what I'm saying? That's dope. That's he changed dope. it for me. When is your first film coming out? Because you said all these six that you have coming out. Mm-hmm. When is the first one set to come out? Uh, so we're doing a premiere for the uh, short film Terry in September. They just emailed me today. We're gonna do a premiere for it. Uh, the Tom Brady thing, I don't know. And the good news, I don't know. In L.A., what keeps me uh, happy and not depressed is when I do stuff I forget about it because oh, okay. when you hold on to stuff you're like this gonna change my life that's when you get sick because if it don't change your life then where do you go and right. then um, the TV show I'm doing with MC Light I'm on a TV what? show I'm MC on a TV Light? show I yeah. love MC Light oh she's amazing she's amazing I love it because of the history man she got a TV show called Cut, um uh, Partners in Rhyme. I play her brother on the TV show, and we shot season two, and it airs uh, in the fall. Okay. And I'm pretty excited about that, too. It's on Wii TV and all black streaming service. So, That's dope. Yeah, it's happening. That's dope, man. Man, thank you so much, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to link up with you? Uh, you can call me. I'm going to be at the house for a minute. But, <laughs> uh, please follow me, Comedian Ron G. Comedian R-O-N-G. Also, I'm at the World Famous Laugh Factory every Sunday at Chocolate Sunday's Comedy Show. Um, again, I post all my dates on my uh, Instagram, Comedian R-O-N-G. I got some cool stuff happening, too. And you yeah. didn't mention I'm an Emmy winner as well. I won an Emmy as well. Yes, he has. You didn't bring that up. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's that was all so good. Cool. So how did you end up winning an Emmy? Man, I took a gig I didn't want to take. I did this uh, music festival. and That was God. Oh, man. It was a music festival I didn't want to do because the money wasn't right. And one of the artists and the DJ did not come out. So I'm hosting. I went out and I just, I was performing. I was giving it to him. It was about a thousand black people in Pasadena and I was giving it to him. When it was over, the producer, showrunner from the CNN show was like, hey, bro, um, we got this show we trying to do on CNN and we're looking for a young black voice who can uh, go on uh, the road with us and write for the, the host. I'm like, cool. He told me how much money. I'm like, let's do it. And I did it and it changed my life, bro. And we won an Emmy. My first, my first time being a consulting producer. Wow. So where, where did you say you perform at? Every what? Uh, every Sunday at the world famous Laugh Factory a venue, uh, the show is called Chocolate Sundays. It's like the biggest, longest running comedy show in in the nation, 
and uh, I'm the host. Wow. Well, yeah. we, need to, we need to check that out. This Sunday I'm there. Y'all should come. We, I got okay. you. We leave Monday. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Come through. Yeah, we gonna come oh, through it's it's a great time. Oh, yeah. I believe you. No, 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 no. I'm not, I, it's almost like I can't explain it to you. Like, the energy of the show, I can tell you, but when you're here, you're like, oh. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That's what Sunday is. It's great. We're we gonna check that out. Yeah. Date night. Pull up. Yeah, yeah, because we out here. We, just, we outside. We outside. Yeah, yeah. Just chilling. So, what else? With that fresh haircut you got. Man, here we go. Damn. Shout out to Danny. Danny at that, uh, the, the spot. spot. Yeah. My son going win tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Oh, he did that. And he always he did. prayed before he cut your hair. <laughs> he cut like he went in his prayer closet. He went in his prayer closet and then cut your hair. He's like, man, God, he gonna love that these clippers, all right, man, because he be like, man, e, I'm gonna start traveling with you. His birthday coming up too, man. Shout out that boy. Happy birthday, Danny. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Man, we love thank you for brother. having me, man. Appreciate thank you, bro. man. Appreciate hey. the love, man. Mr. Mackin, check it, man. You. Hey, man. Where that tall woman at? <laughs> <laughs> man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss's talk. And we have. Man.